Hey guys, this is George Chamella. I'm the owner of Maryland Gumworks. We're here to talk about the new uh, updated design for our MGW SP1000 Site Pro. We're going to go over some of the little design tweaks that uh, make the tool more versatile and also a little more cost effective. The tool has been a very popular tool for us. It has been selling very well and we've been getting great accolades for it. The only criticism that we have had is that the cost, the tool's pretty costly, but it's worth it. But um, you do, in addition to the cost of the tool, if you see here, this is our standard block. Uh, the tool has this that comes uh, with the Site Pro tool standard, which is a straight block assembly. And we also had, as I'll show you, the optional carriage, which was the 30 degree carriage. And what we wanted to do was, and if you look at this new design, you'll see the apparent differences. We have a stainless shaft here. Let me pull this back here and we'll show you. Um, these are the two carriages that we had. This would be the standard one that came in the Site Pro, the original design with the square block. And then we had the 30 degree angle block for the Glocks and the H and K type tools and other tools or other sites that have 30 degree angled sites. The reason why we had the two carriage assemblies is because this part of it being left hand threaded into the tool, we tightened it in a fixture and the problem was is that the customer risk trying to clamp on this to change the blocks out, they would put nicks and dings in this and then it would gall up inside the support bushing in the site pro. So we decided the best thing to do was to change the whole carriage out. That made this part pretty costly when really all you're going after is the block. So instead of having the two separate carriages like this, I'm going to show you how our new site tool works. The design is much better. We'll go ahead and take this top assembly off. And lift off the top body, take the washers out of the way. Let's get this out of the way and we'll flip it over here and you'll see that we have a nice 416 stainless shaft now, harder material so we can put a nice deep quarter inch hex brooch in there and the tool is provided with a quarter inch Allen wrench. Now remember, for reference, this is left hand threaded into this threaded shaft on here. We do that due to the design, the engineering design of this tool, the way it performs. When you go to pull a sight on, you don't want this thing to unscrew, so we put a reverse left hand thread. So just make sure you keep in mind when you want to take this apart, you actually want to turn it clockwise to actually remove it. And once you go a few turns, should be able to just unscrew it and pull it out. Don't forget about that because you'll try to tighten it while you're trying to take it off. Make sure you remember it's left hand thread. Once that shaft comes out, you can just pull the block out. You have a little bronze bearing washer on each side. Keep in mind that there's a beveled one because we put a strength fillet on the machine piece here. That washer makes sure that that bevel goes against that fillet. So you just put that there. Now you have your straight block and the angle block is included in the kit now. So you do no longer have to buy an additional part. The new Site Pro comes with both blocks. So to change it out is as simple as we just showed. You just take the new block in, drop it in, put the shaft in from the end, guide it in, take the other washer, I'll lift it up so you can see, and just drop it right in between there. And then again, you're going to want to Put it in by unscrewing it since it's a left hand thread. You do not have to get on it tight because the, the whole design of it with the left hand thread keeps it in place. So you just want to get it in there snug, put the Allen wrench in, just give it a little tug there and then just make sure that it turns freely. It's as simple as that from going block to block. It's very easy, very simple and most importantly it's cost effective for the customer. Okay, while we have the upper assembly off, let's actually talk about some of the design features on it right now. Um, this Delrin pad here is actually designed to be exactly 10 thousandths above the block surface so that you never scratch the top of the slide. It is adjustable if you have some front sights that, that actually sit a little bit higher off the slide so you don't scrape them, you can flip it over here and you can actually turn this screw and it also is the same size as the hex brooch on the end of the handle. So what you do is you just turn it and you can do fine adjustments. 90% of the time though, you want that unscrewed completely away from it and this tab seated. And that gives you your set factory clearance of 10 thousandths. 
One of the key features, though, one of the hidden features that a lot of people were unaware of, and it actually caused us to get a few negative comments because we didn't outline this or highlight this in the previous video, is that this pad can actually be, I'll show you, you can actually turn this in to get a hold of it, screw it in there good ways, so you can grab a hold of it and remove it, and you'll see there's a washer on the end of it here, and there's also one down inside there. You can take one of these washers out, and you can actually stick one of the washers back in there, back the screw back out, and now when you put the pad in, the pad can actually recess below the block. And the reason for that, which a lot of customers wanted, is if you have a slide like this that has a cut into the slide, like a Novak low mount or an adjustable site, you don't want to be pushing real high up on the site. You want to get down there into the dovetail. This allows you to do that. A lot of customers did not know that that feature was available in the Site Pro, so they thought that was a limiting feature of the tool when in fact it is not. Okay, so here's the lower half of the assembly, and this is actually the slide uh, clamping fixture. This is what you adhere the slide to and hold it down in place and then put the upper assembly. We're going to talk about a few of the design tweaks on this. The previous design, and we've got one here, had two individual pads on each side and they work fine, they actually work the same way. However, you do lose a little bit of your clamping force by this gap in here. And the other problem was the relief area you see here for some of the under lugs on some of the longer slides that we use when you flip it around. This front tab had a tendency to dip down and when you go to try to pull it in, it get kind of cumbersome because it can get jammed in there. So what we decided to do was change that design to one long support tab on each side and now when you pull it all the way out it can't droop down and you also get about 30 percent more contact area and support area of the slide. The only caveat to that is you just have to when you go to clamp it against the slide is you do have to do them together, bring them out together about a quarter to a half turn together like that. If you try to turn one all the way you see this is pulling out but it could cock it and get it jammed. So just keep that in mind. When you pull it back, just pull them both back. Gravity just drops it and gets them out of the way. We do still make the individual pads. If for any reason uh, a customer has a need to take one of the pads out, you can actually buy those direct from Maryland Gunworks as replacement parts. Okay, one of the key features with our Site Pro that sets us apart from the competition is the fact that even though this is a universal sight tool, meaning that it's got height adjustability and you've got widths of the slide adjustability like this, it is still very critical to support the rails of a slide. And I'm going to show you an example. This is a Glock slide that was sent to, in, to us by a customer that wanted to know if our Sight Pro would prevent damage like this. What he did was he used a, comp a competitor's tool that only supports the side rails and he basically torqued it down squeezed the slide and as you can see he cracked it. He put too much pressure on it and this thin wall here on the inside he cracked the rail right here. And the reason that is is because the tools didn't have any support for the inside. As companions to our Sight Pro we actually machine shoes that are specifically designed for certain model guns and we have about 41 of them available now and it's constantly being expanded. So what we do is we slide this inside here, and it may not go all the way in with the, yeah, we, it's actually clear here. This supports it. So now when you put this in here, it keeps it from expanding because of the side pressure of the tabs, but it also keeps it from being crushed due to the metal shoe that's inside. That is a very important feature, and that's why customers prefer our tool. Even though these are an additional cost, they're very inexpensive. They retail for under $20 a piece. So it's the worth the peace of mind for a three or four hundred dollar slide not to get scrapped. So here's how you uh, actually insert the slide shoe into the tool. You've got a channel in here and you just drop it down in there and then provided with our tool is the little shoe screw here. It goes in from the bottom and you line up the screw and you screw it until it's tight and then you just back it off maybe a turn, push up on it and then you take your slide and you put the rails in like that and all you want to do is just get it snug for now because when we put the tool on it we're going to move it again. 
So as you can see, it supports it really well. Now you can take your little side clamps. You can run them up against the sides. Now you have full support, as you can see, cannot get crushed due to the steel shoe on the inside, cannot be expanded due to the aluminum hard-coated support tabs that go all the way down and pretty much capture almost 50% of the slide's length. Really good support. Once you have that like that, you're ready to put the top part on, and all you do is you just slide it down over top of it. Again, make sure this center screw is backed off completely so the set gap is set from the factory. Take your two washers, lay them on there. Take your two clamp knobs, and you screw them down. And that's when you want to make sure that this thing is in the middle here. Now if this was, let me loosen it here, and I'll move this forward a little bit, break the tabs loose a little bit. Now, this is actually how you want to put it in. Go ahead and get this way out of the way. And the reason we say this is, for example, you had pushed a sight off completely and it was way over here. You don't want the block to come down and hit the top of the sight. So you get it like that first, get the slide in, then you want to just go back here and we're going to go ahead and push this sight off the rest of the way. So you just line it up, loosen everything, slide the slide back down here, loosen the little tabs, you get it lined up just like that, tighten up the little tabs, tighten up the bottom, make sure these are tight, gaps already set, and you're ready to go. And you just turn it, it should come right out. The fine thread gives you a tremendous amount of leverage, so even a really tight sight should just come right out. Okay, and then you just break it loose under the bottom, break the top loose, break the little tabs loose, all four of them. You can pull the thing forward, take the sight out, slide it out, and you're done. Okay, we're going to illustrate one of the, we talked about uh, being able to bring that white pad, referring to this, which is the clearance pad between the pusher block and the slide. Here's a situation on this exact same slide. This is one where we'd want to want to, we would want to take one of the washers out so that we can get the pusher block down lower. But here's the opposite issue. As you can see, like I was talking about previously, this is a front sight that is up on a pedestal. So if you set that white Delrin block right here and clamp the tool, the block is only going to be ten thousandths above that. And as you can see, that's a lot more than ten thousandths. That's probably close to an eighth of an inch or so. So what we want to do is we see this tool here. We're actually going to take the pad and we're going to start get our Allen wrench out. We're going to start by actually getting it out quite a bit like that. We'll start with that there. We'll set this aside and let's go ahead and clamp the slide into the lower base. Now while we're doing that I'll show you another thing. Even though the under lug here is not super long, it'll probably be reached by the standard side. And when we say the standard side, we mean the tool has a square side on the bottom, but it also has a relieved, a relieved side here. This is designed for like Colt 1911 government models and some of the uh, longer target M&P type slides. Those slides have a really long recoil spring under lug, so you flip the tool 180 degrees. So that's what we're going to do here. We're actually going to put this shoe in for the Smith & Wesson 3rd Gen 9mm, which is this slide. I'm going to go ahead and put the clamp shoe in. Now, instead of bringing it in on this side, we're actually going to bring it in from this side. And here's another thing that we talk about. Um, if you have these little slide pieces here and you can't get it in like this, this is the option that you do because we do have people asking us about that. What you'll do is you'll take the shoe out 
and you'll actually go ahead and insert the shoe in the tool prior to putting it in and that way you can actually drop it down after the thumb safeties. So then you bring it in, just clamp it and then loosen it so you can move it around. So now look at how much clearance you can go. You can slide that all the way back in there, which means the front sight is now accessible to the block. On the other side, it would hit here, and the front sight would stick out like this, and you may not be able to reach it. So that's what that little undercut there is for. So you just bring it in, and again, right now we're just going to bring it out and leave it out so that we can check our clearance. This is where the white pad's going to be, and obviously we need to set that so that the block doesn't scrape the side, it just hits contacts the site there. So we're gonna go ahead and put the tool back on. The block would be, now this tool obviously has the angle on it, we'll change it to the square side prior to pushing on it, but we're just gonna show you how it operates here. We'll put the washers on, put the clamp knobs on, very quick. Now, if you look underneath here, you can see very clearly that the pad is way down far enough, so the block is way above the slide. So now what we want to do is we're just going to loosen it. We're going to back the tool up. To get it in the middle, like that. And you can see, if you look closely, you can see I'm going to put one of the pusher block tabs right over the slide. And then what I can do so I can take my Allen wrench and I can slowly back the pad up. And if what you can do also is you can actually take a little business card and stick it on top of the slide so you don't actually damage the slide. And go ahead and bring it down until the business card stops uh, moving freely as a shim. Once you have that set, you can go ahead and lock the clamp down on there. You can lift it up a little bit, take the card out, but lock the clamp down and then you're set. Once you have that good setting where you have about 10 to 15 thousandths clearance, then you can go ahead and slide the tool back and remove the front sight. So that's how the pad works. You can either protrude it out to give you less clearance, or you can actually take the washer out and you can go down inside the slide to push out a, a low mount or an adjustable sight. Okay, we've uh, shown the overview of how the tool works. We're also just going to highlight a few of the actual customer uh, feedback changes that we made. We really listen to our customers' uh, input on our tools to try to strive to make them you know, as perfect as possible. One of the things we had a few uh, people critique about it was the top. We originally made these with like a ball nose. Um, looked good and everything, and we didn't seem to have an issue with it, but some of the customers said when they're really trying to you know, get through a site install quickly, sometimes they fumbled with getting this, the thread started, and we even had a couple people cross-thread them. So what we did was we machined like a uh, dog nose tip right on the edge of it so that now you can actually put it on there and it just falls right on and it starts real quickly. It's a small change but you know the customer appreciates it and it makes it work well. Another thing that we changed was, I'll stick this on here and I'll actually take one of these bolts out. We originally had this center bolt as a knurled screw like this because we thought from a convenience uh, factor it would be easier just to use this rather than having to pick up a tool to turn it. But here was the issue. Um, the customer said when they went to turn it in like this, when they went to turn it, they would actually scrape their knuckles or scrape their fingers on the knurl or get it jammed in there and pinch it. And we, we definitely agree that could have been improved on the design. So what we decided to do was replace this with a grade 8 fine pitch set screw. And the nice part about it, and it actually worked out convenient for us, is that the hex on here is a quarter inch hex and it matches the quarter inch hex on the end of the stainless support rod. And we provide the wrench, so it's very convenient. One thing we want to let our customers that already have our previous uh, version of the Site Pro know is that we're here to support that tool fully. And we also offer some adaptable upgrades and also some alternatives. We will be discontinuing or phasing out the full carriage assembly but tools that already use that, they're not left out in the cold because they can buy direct from MGW the new shaft, which has the hex in it. They'll be provided with the new stainless shaft to replace the smooth one that doesn't have the hex. 
and the block, and they'll save a lot of money. The cost of just the replacement block and the shaft, which they can take their carriage assembly, remove this one out of the tool to upgrade, and they can just retrofit it, and it's going to be much cheaper than the $75 retail that the original 30-degree assembly block was. We also will allow customers to buy a full assembly if they want to, but just keep in mind that you will have to unscrew it and take it apart to do that. So the best way to do it is the one time is to upgrade to the shaft, change that out on your tool, and then you only have to buy the block. And then you'll have both blocks. You'll have the angle block and the straight block. Also, a new feature due to customer request as well is we are going to be offering some different blocks. We are actually going to be offering some blocks that have small little front sight protrusions. We feel that they wear very prematurely, so we didn't include it on the original design. We believe in pushing on the upward part above the slide, but some customers are very adamant about pushing down into the dovetail. So we will provide these blocks, and the nice thing about it is these will be available through our distributors, just the blocks, instead of all the other uh, peripheral pieces. So you won't have to have a huge investment to change out these blocks. These being wear items is also nice. You don't have to change out the whole assembly if one of these blocks breaks or whatever. You can just buy a spare block. One of the other features we want to stress about our tool is the actual heft and the size of all of the components. Uh, there are some competitors' tools out there that may look similar to the Site Pro, but they do not compare. The size of the threaded shafts are much smaller, they're weaker, they're prone to breakage, and they're also prone to just not giving enough mechanical force. This fine pitch thread, hardened bushings, and a full 5 8 diameter pushing shaft ensure that you get the most force that you can possibly put onto the site. Now we do have limitations. A lot of gun manufacturers are going to hydraulic arbor presses, and some of the manufacturers have loose tolerances on their dovetails so they can be extremely tight. We want to stress that we have a warranty on our tool. We have a one-year warranty. It covers the entire tool with the one exception of abuse and over-torquing. And when we say over-torquing, what we mean is this T-handle is designed with a set screw on the end that you may loosen and you may slide this T-handle all the way to one side for additional leverage. You cannot, however, put any type of cheater bar onto the end of this T-handle and try to force the removal of a site that's too tight. You just can't do it. It's not designed for that. This is a precision tool to remove, install, and adjust sites. It is not going to be able to take the place of a hydraulic press. So if we get any tools back that have this T-handle obviously bent, we're going to have an issue with the warranty. But other than that, the tool is bulletproof. So that does it. That's a full overview of all the design changes on the new evolution of our Site Pro tool. Uh, like we said, if you have any questions or need any technical assistance on either this tool or the previous version, want to do any upgrades or uh, buy or purchase any adapters that aren't available through distribution, feel free to contact us at the number listed or email us at tech support.